Based off the photos I found, this is the same harness Desmond Doss used when he earned the Medal of Honor. Now I wasn't able to find a tutorial, but I do know that it's based off the bowline knot. And if you look at this tag end, it's pointing this way, that one's pointing the other way. Based off the photos, it looks like this is the same way he tied it. And yes, I know, bowline is the mispronunciation, but uh, have you seen Hexaw Ridge? I'm going to teach you how to tie a bowline knot. Hexaw Ridge portrays the actions of Desmond Doss while he was fighting in Okinawa. And he used this knot set up to save 75 men who were injured during that heavy fighting. There's no way to tell how many times he tied and untied this harness, but it is a system that allows you to slip it off of the wounded soldier without having to untie it. And then it's simply a matter of slipping it back on the next person that needs to be saved. Now a typical bowline is tied by turning in an overhand loop and then taking the free end, passing it from the back, you go around your standing end and then right back through the hole you came from. Pull everything tight and there is your standard bowline. Now what Corporal Doss discovered is you could take a double section of your rope and tie the same bowline and this would result in a knot that leaves two loops and these are the leg loops. So we'll take that and we'll slide it onto our mannequin here. Okay, now we have to tie the chest harness. And so what I think he did is took a bite of his cord and placed it all the way around the torso of the soldier he was saving. So now we have our leg loops down below and we have this bite going completely around the wounded soldier's torso. To tie in the bowline, we're gonna twist in an overhand loop. Then we're gonna lay that loop right across the soldier's chest. From here, we'll take this loop, we'll pass it through there we go. And now it's a matter of just going around that tree and then back through the hole. So I'll go downwards around the tree and then rabbit goes right through the hole again. And if you notice, we ended up on the top side, just like the photo. Pull everything tight. Okay. And then when it's time to hoist the soldier, this thing goes up like that. We have weight distribution from the chest to the legs and we are able to lower them down that escarpment. Let's tie this one more time. Mannequin is lying down because that's probably how Corporal Doss found most of the soldiers he saved. If we take a section that is about as long as a soldier, we'll fold it in half and that'll give us enough room to tie in our leg loops. So here's a rabbit out of the hole around the tree and back down. And there we go. Here's our leg loops. Let's get those slipped on. Now for the chest harness, what I'll do is I'll take a bite and I'll stretch it out so it's just past a double arm's length. Okay. Now again, if the soldier was down, it may have gone around the top of their head and then slipped it underneath that other arm and then back up to the chest. We'll take this portion of the harness and we'll tie in our overhand loop, twist and we'll fold it over the soldier's chest. There we go, just like that. And now this portion of the loop is going to go through from the back side. Okay. We'll scoop up this standing end and then we'll go back through the loop. There we go. And now with that, we'll have our distribution with our leg harness and our torso harness and we're able to lower the soldier safely down the escarpment. Now I want you to be able to appreciate how difficult this can actually be. This is a completely static environment and I'm using a mannequin. When Corporal Doss did it, it was under heavy enemy artillery and small arms fire and there were men dying all around him. So let's do this as fast as I can. You can see how stumbly it's going to look. So here we go. I'm trying to pull in my bowline. And he did this 75 times too, so make sure that stays. There we go. Put it around our feet. And there are reports of him calming the men that he saved and helping them through the chaos of the battle, which makes you really appreciate how much of a stud this guy really was. Ah, come on. Uh oh, 
looks like I might have tightened it too tight. I'm sure the soldier wouldn't appreciate uh, all the handling like that. Anyhow, we got it mostly on. Now when you take a look at this, uh, I have a little bit of slack here so the bottom harness isn't given as much support as the top harness and so that would cause some extra restriction on the airway. But like you can see, he was able to do that multiple times over and save 75 men. Now if you'd like to stick around for the Medal of Honor citation, here it is. Private First Class Desmond T. Doss, United States Army, Medical Detachment, 307th Infantry, 77th Infantry Division, near Yuraso, Mura, Okinawa, Ryukyu Islands, 29 April through 21 May, 1945. He was a company aid man when the 1st Battalion assaulted a jagged escarpment 400 feet high. As our troops gained the summit, a heavy concentration of artillery, mortar, and machine gun fire crashed into them, inflicting approximately 75 casualties and driving the others back. Private First Class Doss refused to seek cover and remained in the fire-swept area with the many stricken, carrying them one by one to the edge of the escarpment and there lowering them on a rope-supported litter down the face of a cliff to friendly hands. On 2 May, he exposed himself to heavy rifle and mortar fire in rescuing a wounded man 200 yards forward of the lines on the same escarpment. And two days later, he treated four men who had been cut down while assaulting a strongly defended cave, advancing through a shower of grenades to within eight yards of enemy forces in a cave's mouth, where he dressed his comrades' wounds before making four separate trips under fire to evacuate them to safety. On 5 May, he unhesitatingly braved enemy shelling and small arms fire to assist an artillery officer. He applied bandages, moved his patient to a spot that offered protection from small arms fire, and while artillery and mortar shells fell close by, painstakingly administered plasma. Later that day, when an American was severely wounded by fire from a cave, Private First Class Doss crawled to him where he had fallen 25 feet from the enemy position, rendered aid and carried him 100 yards to safety while continually exposed to enemy fire. On 21 May, in a night attack on high ground near Shuri, he remained in exposed territory while the rest of his company took cover, fearlessly risking the chance that he would be mistaken for an infiltrating Japanese and giving aid to the injured until he was himself seriously wounded in the legs by the explosion of a grenade. Rather than call another aid man from cover, he cared for his own injuries and waited five hours before litter bearers reached him and started carrying him to cover. The trio was caught in an enemy tank attack and Private First Class Doss, seeing a more critically wounded man nearby, crawled off the litter and directed the bearers to give their first attention to the other man. Awaiting the litter bearers return, he was again struck, this time suffering a compound fracture of one arm. With magnificent fortitude, he bound a rifle stock to his shattered arm as a splint and then crawled 300 yards over rough terrain to the aid station. Through his outstanding bravery and unflinching determination in the face of desperately dangerous conditions, Private First Class Doss saved the lives of many soldiers. His name became a symbol throughout the 77th Infantry Division for outstanding gallantry far above and beyond the call of duty.